joining us now to help us uh, with another reality check and to bring some positive energy and good vibes into studio is Diljeet Taylor, BYU women's track and field coach, cross country coach. So great to have you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I love the tweet that you sent out this morning uh, from your Twitter account. At uh, I want you to say how, the the how you want this Twitter handle uh, sounding. So how, what what is the backing between your behind your Twitter handle? Oh, D Dosange Taylor. Yeah, That's my maiden name. Okay, Dosange. Dosange. Yeah. Okay, there you go. You said I miss standing on the track, three stopwatches in hand, watching my women pour sweat into their dreams. Keep sweating in solitude, ladies. We will be together again. Hashtag BYU run for her. How often do you feel emotions like those described in that tweet? Well, I think the last week has just been a little bit of just trying to process it all. And this morning when I woke up, it's starting to really hit me that um, this is going to be our new normal for a while. And so, yeah, I just miss those women. You have, you have a, a, a great attitude and a positive attitude. How do difficult is it to maintain that where people are looking to you for that during something like this how, how difficult is it to to keep that up I have to choose to be that way every day <laughs> um I think inside I'm hurting and I think I think all of us are hurting to some extent right and um on this path that I've been on it's kind of been filled with a lot of hurt and a little bit of hope and I feel like just the last couple of days I'm at the fork of the road where I can choose to continue just down the hurt road or I can be hopeful and I'm I'm choosing to be hopeful um, so that my women are hopeful. Follower at D Dosange Taylor and don't you forget it on the Twitter machine. Dilji Taylor is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Um, I, I know it's like pouring salt in the wound, but you're on pace to win a couple of national titles probably. Your distance medley relay team was doing unprecedented things within the program. You have a star in Whitney Orton who's probably going to win a national title. How do you help those teams out of this funk? Yeah, we focus a lot on the process. And I think in sports, it's sometimes tough to not focus on the outcome. But what we have taught them is let's focus on the journey. And we did a lot of great things in the process this year. I mean, top 10 boards, breaking school records left and right, ranked number one in the DMR, ranked number one uh, in the 3K, women choosing to give up individual events to just go all in and win a national title, <clears throat> um, putting women on the line that have the confidence and the faith that, hey, I'm going to go win this thing. Uh, it's a tough thing to do, and it's taken us a culmination of years to get there. Um, but I don't want to lose sight of the process. The process is what made us great, and I enjoyed every one of those moments. Um, it's hard to look at those women and think about the opportunity that they missed because um, they, they were going to do something really special and bring something special back to Provo. And um, I'm just really proud of, of what they did to get to that point. And that's what we can celebrate right now. Absolutely. And there is you, – obviously – you can see your passion and how emotional this whole situation has been. Everybody kind of had their moment when it became official and you get the word. Your moment just happened to go viral. Uh, and you guys were on the track when the NCAA made the, the decision that the sports were going to be suspended. There, you were on camera talking to your team on the track. What was that moment like for you? Well, the whole day leading up to that moment, you understand, we flew out on Wednesday. We did a workout Wednesday on the track. We visualized what was going to happen Friday night on the track. We come back Thursday. It's 24 hours before, you know, the first event. We're on the track. And there's been words, just, just rumors that this possibly could happen. But when we got the official word, it was, I just felt like I needed to bring the women together and just tell them how proud I was. Um, and really just control the controllables and, and to not let them give up on their dreams. Um, it, you work a lifetime for that moment. And, and, you know, other coaches have come on here and shared, I feel for Pope with the men's basketball team, women, I mean, men's volleyball, they had a phenomenal season. So yeah, that, that one shining moment in March, um, that's, that's what you work for. It's what you sacrifice for. And, um, to not even, to not even be able to watch them get on the line, um, we're in the arena. We're literally you're, you're in there. the arena you're in there. Albuquerque. And to have to say that. And again, I had to compose myself and hold it together. And that's such a tough thing to do. I'm not really a crier as it is, even though I'm like on the brink of breaking down right now. Um, but in that moment that I spoke with them, 
I, I needed them to just process it the right way. And then, of course, I walked into a corner and just kind of had a breakdown. Yeah. Uh, I really feel for them, and they're not going to get that moment back. Um, and that's a hard thing to process. Now, in that paradigm, you still have to balance the, oh, my gosh, look at everything that's happening in the world. But your life is so centered on helping your athletes who have come specifically to BYU to be the best and reach for the best. So how do you balance the big picture with, OK, this is my paradigm as well at BYU? Yeah, I think over the last couple of days or this last week, being home and seeing what's happening globally has has helped me kind of process that. But it doesn't take away from my whole purpose in life is to empower these women. Uh, I get empowered by empowering them. And to have that taken away or just put on hold has has been hard. And I think it's okay to be vulnerable and say that this is a really hard thing we're going through. I'm going to be hopeful and optimistic, um, but I'm going to hurt. And 18 years, I grew up in this house with my family. And in, above our kitchen was this plaque. And I never understood it the entire 18 years that I was there because life was was easy uh, in comparison to what we're going through now. But it, it was a serenity prayer, prayer. And it just said, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And for some reason, that thing this week has just been on my mind. And I keep thinking about that. It's like, okay, let's control the controllables. We can't change this. Um, and we just have to stay hopeful and positive. Um, I never even knew what those words meant growing up. I read them. They were in the kitchen every day. Um, but they speak to me on a pretty high level right now. And so um, we're not in control right now. And that's tough because as athletes and coaches, we take pride in being in control of our lives. We control our mileage. We control how much we sleep, what we eat, uh, when we go to practice, how fast we run. But right now we have zero control and it's determined by things that are outside of, of us and bigger than us. And so um, from a global standpoint, I know we're doing the right thing. And I'm hopeful that this will pass quickly, but internally it hurts. Well, an earthquake in Utah doesn't help us uh, with no, the No, it's like, I moved. We're not in control. We're no. so not in control. <laughs> and I moved from California. I thought I got away from that. Um, so, yeah, just tough times all around. It's been, it's been a tough week to process. And I think if you can stay positive, and sport teaches us that, right? Like, that is the best thing that we get from sports is learning how uh, to be resilient, to be relentless and hopeful and, and go through these hard things and come out better. And so I, I'm really optimistic that we are going to come out better from this. It's just we have to do it the right way while we're in it and just make sure that we remain that positive uh, mindset. So how does the, the announcement that the NCAA, with the spring sports at least, are going to get those, some eligibility back, how, how does that change things for you guys for next year? Well, I think I'm not really – I met with the team on Friday, and we have a couple seniors. I, I don't know what it looks like for them. It's tough here at BYU sometimes with the women's sports to have some married women. Erica Burke has a child. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know what that looks like for them, and it would be unfair for me to expect them automatically to just finish out their eligibility. Uh, so that's another unknown. We have Olympic trials this summer. I don't know what that looks like. We're kind of just on pins and needles waiting to see what's going to happen there. But I'm hopeful that, that things will work out and living with gratitude and just being grateful for what these women have given to this program. When I look back at that, what we've accomplished over not just this year, but the last four years, these women built this thing. And um, I, have to, I, have to find, I have to find the good in, and just live with gratitude and just be grateful. I think that's going to help all of us just get through it. It's interviews like this that make me grateful that I can come to my job each and every day. You've helped us feel better and want to be better. So thank you for coming into Studio B. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. You know I bring gifts. Oh. So you guys got a little tailor-made beanie, always some self-promotion. Oh, yes. oh, okay. wow. And then a little bit of Lysol, which I should have just sprayed that before. I don't know how you, know, you got you guys, this because this stuff this is, is so hard. This is liquid gold, okay? Liquid gold right now. So enjoy, enjoy. Stay thank healthy. You. Stay healthy. Happy. Thank yeah. you very much. I want to disinfect my microphone during oh, the break. So yeah, I'm just there you go. I'm going to do that, okay, a little bit more. Oh, dear. You're right. This, this is like, this is liquid gold. Thank you so much. I, usually I bring acai bowls, but everything is closed. So <laughs> here we better. go. Here we Even go. Even better. Thank you so much, All Coach. right, thanks for having me. All right, coming up, a 